Welcome, Beans Army, to another snippet off of the Less Is More Sports Podcast, the college offseason podcast, where you could say we're less of the regular season, but more of the offseason. Without Matt here, I feel very confident in saying that, because if you've been following on the social media pages, it's going to be a while before Matt and I do our next full-length episode. So, in the meantime, if you haven't already, check out the interview Matt and I did with Davion McKnight and Marcellus Vale. It's a really good interview, and those guys gave a lot of great information, so check it out if you haven't already. And if you're following on the social media pages, you've been seeing that I've been doing some all-time college football team polls. In the near future, it's going to make sense, so just stay tuned with what's coming soon. And also for the time being, I'm going to be dropping some little snippets of some key information that is covering all the news in the offseason of collegiate football and basketball. And without further ado, I'm going to get into the topic of today's video, which ironically enough, y'all know I'm a Duke fan. Y'all know I'm a Duke fan through and through, but it's but it kills me to do this. It absolutely just kills me to do this. I'm going to be talking one way or the other about that other team eight miles down the road in Chapel Hill in North Carolina. So to get started, I'm going to talk about one topic where it doesn't necessarily talk about North Carolina directly, but it talks about a former North Carolina Tar Heel in Caleb Love. Caleb Love, as you all remember, enters the transfer portal where he would leave UNC, where he had a pretty solid career. And of course, I will never forgive him for being the catalyst behind ending Coach K's career. After leaving UNC after a disappointing season this year, he commits to Michigan and shortly after he's forced to decommit from Michigan because of an issue with his school credits, credits transferring, which I know I'm sure a lot of you internet trolls took that opportunity to make a UNC fake class meme or joke or whatever. But regardless, not the point of this video or soundbite, whichever platform you're looking, you're listening on. The point of this, um, three schools emerged as the front runners, Texas, Gonzaga, and Arizona. And of course, as you all know, Texas is my other team. And I'm going to tell you firsthand, there was no chance in hell that Caleb Love was coming to Texas. After Max Admis transferred in, Tyrese Hunter came back. I highly doubted that he would leave UNC for a crowded backcourt. Maybe if one of those guys came in, but not both. So I'm going to waste no time with Texas. I'm going to move on to the second team listed, and that's Gonzaga. And I'm going to be honest, I was intrigued by this one. As you all know, Ryan Nimhard, younger brother of former Gonzaga great Andrew Nimhard, transferred in from Creighton this last offseason. I thought Nimhard's pass first play style would coexist with Caleb Love's scoring play style perfectly. And I thought, had Caleb Love transferred to Gonzaga, that might be the best backcourt in the non power five. And I wouldn't even think it's close at that point. But ultimately, Let's get to the school where he would ultimately commit to, and that is the Arizona Wildcats. And here's why this is huge. Caleb Love, at the beginning of the offseason, when he initially entered the transfer portal, said that he wanted to go to a team with a coach that would hold him accountable, force him to play better. Well, let's be honest. What better coach is that than Tommy Lloyd? Lloyd, in his first two seasons with the Wildcats, has a 61-11 and record, and those 61 wins are an NCAA record for most wins in a coach's first two seasons. Before coming to Arizona, Lloyd spent the previous 22 seasons as an assistant coach for the Gonzaga Bulldogs, where he helped the Zags win 20 conference titles. Some believe that Lloyd had as much to do with the Zags' success as head coach Mark Few did. I'll let, I'll let you all decide that. During his time in Spokane, Lloyd would coach future pros like Rui Hachimura, Zach Collins, Damana Sabonis, Austin Day, and many more. Fast forward to his first season at Arizona. He went 33-4, winning the Pac-12 while finishing second in the final AP poll. He worked with future pro Benedict Matherin in his first season also. So coaching style, so coaching factor, definitely a check. Now Let's look at the roster he's going to have with Arizona. One of the key returners is the is the seven footer who averaged 14 points and eight rebounds last year in center Omar Blue. But here's the big one: 
Love is not the only transfer guard joining the Wildcat backcourt next year. Alabama former, or sorry, former Alabama point guard Jaden Bradley is also on the team. And like I said with Ryan Nimhard, Bradley's pass first style, it fits perfectly with Love's scoring instinct, at least on paper. I don't know any of these guys personally, but on paper it looks good. When Jalen Brad, when Jaden Bradley was coming out of high school, he got a lot of Chris Paul comparisons. If that tells you anything at all, so that wraps up what I have to say about Caleb Love transferring to Arizona. But of course, let's get to UNC because losing a key player like Love, you would think, hurts them, right? Well, in today's case, not so fast because another big storyline for that team on Chapel Hill coming today is that the number 10 ranked junior, Elliot Cadeau, decides to transfer, I mean not transfer, reclassify, to join the Tar Heels this season. Those might remember, Cadeau, as a junior, helped lead Link Academy to their first Geico Nationals Championship, and it's only in their second year of existence, which is really impressive. He's currently leading the Nike EYBL in assists per game with 9.3, and let me tell you that second that guy in second place is way behind. Me personally, y'all know because of the I was waiting on this because y'all know every year I release my annual top 25 basketball recruiting rankings. I was waiting to see if Cadeau was going to reclassify or not because I want to make sure I get everyone involved. Because let me tell you, when I finally drop that list, he's going to be ahead of some very surprising names. And to me, in my personal opinion, he's one of the best facilitating point guards since Lonzo Ball. But he's far from just a facilitator, let me tell you. The guy can also score at all three levels and do it very comfortably. In his final game in that Nike EYBL before deciding to reclassify, he scored 29 points while dishing out 15 assists, if that tells you anything at all. But anyways, not only is having a player like that good for any team, this is where it's huge. North Carolina has historically been at their best when they've had those type of point guards. The names that come to mind, Ed Coda, Joel Berry, just off the top of the head, which as you all know, both led to a championship. And as a Duke fan, that has me a little worried. Like, really worried. Maybe not that worried because at the end of the day, we do have four returners coming back and the number two recruiting class coming in. But, you know, time will tell. I think it makes it very interesting for the Tobacco Road rivalry this year. So it's always interesting, let's be honest. But I think I'm def I definitely think more might even tune in this year. Even more than new normal. Maybe. I don't know. But anyways, I'm rambling because I'm absolutely tired of talking about North Carolina right now. I wanted to go ahead and get this video out of the way. I hope you all enjoy what you heard. Be sure to be on the lookout for more snippets coming soon. But I'm done talking about these tar holes. Your host, Les Abbott and Bean. You want to say something, Bean? No, he, he's just looking at the mic. I don't know. Yep, he wants me to get off. All right, the emperor wants me to get off. I'm done. Have a good night, everyone.